What's up, cool people? My name's Matt. Welcome back to our Bible study. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 24. Um, it's continuing from the previous section, which the last subheading there was just miscellaneous regulations. I would assume this is going to be similar, bleh, similarly miscellaneous, as in not so related to each other. So, yeah. I guess we'll just dig in and see what it says here. So, Deuteronomy chapter 24. Here we go. Suppose a man marries a woman, but she does not please him. Having discovered something wrong with her, he writes a document of divorce, hands it to her, and sends her away from his house. When she leaves his house, she is free to marry another man. But if the second husband also turns against her, writes a document of divorce, hands it to her and sends her away, or if he dies, the first husband may not marry her again, for she has been defiled. That would be detestable to the Lord. You must not bring guilt upon the land the Lord your God is giving you as a special possession. Okay, so... I... Uh, so... Divorce, at least singular divorce, is okay. In fact, the way this is worded, it doesn't even outright ban multiple divorces. But, um... If someone... I guess remarriage is what's, so, is what's more so, like not okay in this situation. Um, yeah, so... I guess previous commands about, you know... Re there were previous commands in the past couple of chapters regarding, like, um, defiling a virgin and different things like that. Or... Even just, you know, having sexual relations with a woman and different claims being made and things like that. I, I guess just the context of those situations really is more so like if there's virginity of the woman assumed and that's not the case, then yeah. The, the whole point was to avoid, you know, sexual promiscuity, which God doesn't like. So, yeah. Um, that's really <laughs> all that I would say has built on any of the previous commands or anything like that. So I guess I'll continue on here with verse 5. A newly married man must not be drafted into the army or be given any other official responsibilities. He must be free to spend one year at home, bringing happiness to the wife he has married. <laughs> it, it, that, that's like not even any kind of option in this day and age. Although, again, culture is very, very different. Drafted into the army... I mean, okay, yeah, that's other official responsibilities. That makes me wonder, because it says official responsibilities, which I would assume is a more limited list than just he's got to work. Because <laughs> they still had to work, you know, their fields and do different things like that. It's not like they could completely avoid work in that day and age. So, I guess when it says official responsibilities, it's more so related to stuff that could have been, like, government or temple-related or whatever. So, uh, verse 6. 
it is wrong to take a set of millstones, or even just the upper millstone, as security for a loan, for the owner uses it to make a living. Mill millstones would have very often been used, I assume, for, like, making flour out of grain and other similar things that really, without doing so, would have made some of the crops just unusable. And very agrarian society, like, yeah, you gotta have that ability there. So, verse 7. If anyone kidnaps a fellow Israelite and treats him as a slave or sells him, the kidnapper must die. In this way, you will purge the evil from among you. So, I'm trying to think of what other situation could happen, like if someone were to kidnap someone and not necessarily treat them as a slave or sell them. Like, those are the main things you would think somebody would do you know, with kidnapping someone. So, yeah. Um, kidnapping is bad. Not really surprising there. Verse 8. In all cases involving serious skin diseases, be careful to follow the instructions of the Levitical priests. Obey all the commands I have given them. Remember what the Lord your God did to Miriam as you were coming from Egypt. Uh, let me just make sure. Traditionally, okay, instead of serious skin diseases, it would have traditionally just said leprosy. Hebrew word can describe various skin diseases. But, um, so the whole thing with Miriam was that basically she and Aaron kind of questioned Moses' leadership at one point. And in the midst of that, God temporarily gave her leprosy to kind of make a point that, like, yeah, no, you're wrong. Moses is chosen specially to lead these people. Um... But, in any case, there were a bunch of rules given to the priests about how to treat leprosy and deal with it. I don't really want to get into all those. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult to look them up. Um, depending on which version that you're reading, you could just look up leprosy and see what the rules were related to that. I guess in this version, you just have to look up skin diseases or maybe even serious skin diseases. But there was there was a whole bunch of, you know, steps in a certain process <laughs> that took a fair amount of time in order to be, you know, cleared and given the okay to, like, kind of get back to normal life. Anyway, verse 10. If you lend anything to your neighbor, do not enter his house to pick up the item he is giving as security. You must wait outside while he goes in and brings it out to you. If your neighbor is poor and gives you his cloak as security for a loan, do not keep the cloak overnight. Return the cloak to its owner by sunset so he can stay warm through the night and bless you, and the Lord your God will count you as righteous. Uh, I mean, okay, so first part of that, if you entered the house to try and get the item, it's, you know, kind of almost, at least it can appear that you're taking it by force rather than this being part of like a you know, loan agreement. Um, and regarding the cloak, it was basically just like, hey, yeah, you don't want to, 
Like, it's it's not okay to take something that somebody really kind of needs and, and then keep it when they need it most. Um, okay, then. Verse 14. Never take advantage of poor and destitute laborers when they are fellow Israelites or... Sorry, whether they are fellow Israelites or foreigners living in your towns. You must pay them their wages each day before sunset because they are poor and are counting on it. If you don't, they might cry out to the Lord against you, and it would be counted against you as sin. So, uh, this is just, like, saying, hey, don't, like, Don't put your neighbors in a bad spot intentionally. And, like, these people who are working for you, yeah, they might be poor and already in a bad spot, but, like, that doesn't mean you should, you know, manipulate them and further put them in a bad spot just because of their current situation. Um, and make sure that they have what they need to get by and continue living each day if you are at all related to that. Uh, verse 16. Parents must not be put to death for the sins of their children, nor children for the sins of their parents. Those deserving to die must be put to death for their own crimes. Makes enough sense on its own. Some of these, I'm thinking, were mentioned previously, and I almost wonder if this is more of like a summary, hey, in case you needed a reminder, because, you know, this is very much spoken word here. In order to help you remember, I'm going to repeat some of this stuff and give you sort of like the summary version of it. But anyway, yeah, uh, while there were certain curses that might have, you know, at this time in God's eyes passed from parents to their children for multiple generations or something like that, that that's still, that curse was not necessarily death. So anyway, uh, moving on to verse 17. True justice must be given to foreigners living among you and to orphans, and you must never accept a widow's garment as security for her debt. Always remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God redeemed you from your slavery. That is why I have given you this command. So, more not taking advantage of people in a bad spot. Um, and just, like, uh, I mean, justice should be justice anyway. That's not really <laughs> something that should need to be said. Um, and never accept a widow's garment as security for her debt. Like, widows were already in a bad enough spot. Um, that didn't need to, there didn't need to be further, like, embarrassment piled on top of that. Anyway, uh, bu -bu -bu, verse 19, and I guess we'll wrap up the chapter. When you are harvesting your crops and forget to bring in a bundle of grain from your field, don't go back to get it. Leave it for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all you do. When you beat the olives from your olive trees, don't go over the boughs twice. Leave the remaining olives for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. When you gather the grapes in your vineyard, don't glean the vines after they are picked. Leave the remaining grapes for the foreigners, orphans, and widows. Remember that you were slaves in the land of Egypt. That is why I am giving you this command. 
So it's more things to kind of help out the those who would have been in a bad spot. Because not too many other reasons why foreigners would have come to them and wanted to live among them. Orphans obviously are in a bad spot. They're without their parents. Widows were also in a bad spot. No husband to help make a living. So basically, all of these are saying like, okay, yeah, go through, do your initial harvesting and gathering and whatnot, but like, don't go over it and be super meticulous about it like, don't necessarily worry about getting every single little thing to the point where you're trying to go back, you know, pick things up again, you know, double check all the vines and different things like that. Like, just harvest it as you normally would and go on your day. If there's anything left behind, that will help out the less fortunate people around you. So it'll at least serve a good purpose, even if you don't bring it in yourself. So anyway, uh, that does it for chapter 24, I guess. And yeah, those, those commands were quite varied. Okay, so it's another chapter full of random kind of regulations and whatnot. It This chunk of chapters has kind of given me the feeling that we're about to kind of wrap up. The broader portion of rules and regulations and whatnot, I don't know for sure if that's the case. Um, but just all these miscellaneous little things kind of gives me that sort of feeling to it. Uh, I don't know, but, um, yeah, in any case, uh, we've got, what, 10 chapters left in total, so, I mean, it's gotta start wrapping up kinda soon-ish, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. If you wanna make sure you don't miss that, subscribe to the channel, click the bell if you're on YouTube. That'll give you updates when I post new videos, or at least it should, if it works right. Sometimes it's, eh, a little dodgy. Um, if you're on other platforms, give me a follow or whatever is appropriate for that. Just look down in the description for info on most of that kind of stuff. I would say also follow me on Rumble, but, like, I think I've been posting too much, and Rumble is having a hard time keeping up. So, yeah... It, the, the, the synchronizing of things is not exactly working too well on there. But I digress. Um, down below the description, leave comments with any thoughts you have related to the, this video, other thoughts you have on other video ideas, whatever. Just let me know down below. So that's going to do it for now. Hope you're all doing well. Hopefully I'll see you for the next video. But until then, stay cool, people.